Okay, in this lecture, we'll continue to talk about the big topic, which is fast Fourier transform. And in particularly, we'll talk about the process that we call unscrambling the fast Fourier transform. Now, in this picture, if you remember, we, based on the example that you have the number of data point capital N is equal to 16. And 16 can be expressed as 2 to the power R, where R is equal to 4. So because R is equal to 4, that means for this kind of computation corresponding to six, 16 data point, we need to do four intermediate vector corresponding to level L equal to 1, 2, 3, up to level L equal to R, which is equal to 4. Now, to refresh your memory, if you remember in the early slides, let's say lecture number 12, at that time, we say we have some kind of equation 7. Equation 7 at that time, which basically say like this, C tilde of 0, C tilde of 1, C tilde of 2, and C tilde of 3. This unknown vector is equal to a coefficient matrix, which is something like uh, uh, W raised to the power 0, 0. So this is W raised to the power 0, w raised to the power 0 time 1, which is still 0, w raised to the power 0 time 2, which is still 0, w raised to the power 0 time 2, which is this, and then w raised to the power 1 time 0, which is still 0, w raised to the power 1 time 2, which is 2, w raised to the power 1 time 3, which is 3, w raised to the power 1 times 4, which is 4. And then the third row is uh, w raised to the power 2 times 0, which is 0, w raised to the power 2 times 1, which is 2. Then the next one will be w raised to the power 2 times 2, that will be 4. Next one will be W raised to the power 2 times 3, which is 6. And the last one should be W raised to the power of 3 times 0, which is 0. Then 3 times 1, which is 3. And next one will be 3 times 2, which is 6. Next one will be 3 times 3, which is 9. And multiply that with the known value F0, F1, F2 and F3. That equation I told you before in, 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 in the early lecture, we call it equation 7 at that time. Now at that time we say in order to figure out the unknown vector C tilde, we need to do a matrix time a vector like that. And for that one it will require n square multiplication, which is very time consuming. So because of that, Later on, we say in lecture number 12, we introduce a new way to compute the unknown vector C, tilde. At that time, we say something like the vector C tilde at 0, C tilde 2, C tilde 1, and C tilde 3. That unknown vector C tilde is equal to the coefficient matrix that you saw over there in equation 7 that I wrote in the red color. But that matrix at that time I told you can be factorized into a product of the two matrix multiplication. At that time I mentioned that and then multiply with the known vector f 
zero F one F two F three. Okay. F zero F one F two and F three. And the equation I just write out for you over there back in lecture number 12 we call it equation number 9 at that time in lecture number 12 now at that time if you remember the way we did is we told you we take the inner product of the second matrix time with the vector f that product we call it the computational vector f corresponding to level 1 then after we do that then we take the first coefficient matrix, which is this 4x4 four four matrix, we multiply with the vector F1 that we just compute and the product between the first coefficient matrix and the vector F1 we just computed together, we call it the computational vector F2. So basically, after we get the second vector F2, that will give you the unknown vector C tutor that we are talking. However, if you notice, you compare equation 7, which is in red color, the left-hand side, and you compare that with equation 9, which is in the uh, blue color on the left-hand side. The order of computation for C tutor has been messed up because in equation 7, you compute like C tilde 0 and then 1 and then 2 and then 3. But according to equation 9, after you compute the vector F1 and vector F2, you obtain the vector C tilde, but the order is like 0, 2, 1, 3 instead of 0, 1, 2, 3. So what it means is after we do a bunch of computation based on equation 9, Oh, by the way, for equation 9, at that time, we do only two-factor computation because the size of the sample data point, capital N, is equal to 4. 4 means R, uh, 2 raised to the power 2. So R is equal to 2. And because R is equal to 2, that's why you only calculate vector F1 and vector F2. On the other hand, for this example that you sh I show you here in the current lecture, number 15, because we have the 16 data point, capital N equal to 16, and that means 2 raised to the power R equal to 4. And because R is equal to 4, that means we have to calculate not only vector F1, vector F2, like in the early lecture, but we have to calculate vector F3 and vector F4 as well. So at the end of the procedure, when we get the vector F4, which is shown you in figure three. Figure three, you can see what I have shown you here is the vector F4. The order of computation, they all mess up. So in order to do that, that means after we obtain the value for the vector F4, we have to rearrange the location to a different place in order to get to the correct order like 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way to 15, okay? So in order for me to explain to you better, after I refresh your memory about this thing, let us go back to figure 3. Figure 3, which is this figure right here, you, s you see on the screen. Now, on this figure over there, you can see the first column here, you have a number from 0 all the way to 15. Those number corresponding to the value of the index k. Remember, the index k, we say at that time, always going from 0 all the way to capital N minus 1. And because capital N is equal to 16, that's why the index k go from 0 to 15. So that is the index. 0 to 15, I just showed to you, you over there, corresponding to k. Now, after that, if you look in figure 3 on the computer screen right now, we want to compute F4, 0, F4, 1, F4, 2, F4, 3, 
F4-4, blah, 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 all the way to F4-15. However, according to my previous lecture, you should also remember the index K that we have here, we can also express that in the binary form. So, for example, instead of, say, computing F4-4, we say we want to compute F4 of 0, 1, 0, 0. And the reason is because when the index k equals to 4, in the binary form, we can express that value as 0, 1, 0, 0. Another example, let's say after we compute the value for F4, 7. Well, instead of say 7, which is based on base 10, we can use the base 2 or binary form. So in that case, number 7 can be expressed as 0, 1, 1, 1. So, and so on, so on. So, for example, instead of say F4 of 12, we say we compute F4 of 1, 1, 0, 0. So, in the previous uh, lecture, I already explained to you how to express any number with respect to base 10 in terms of the number expressed in terms of binary form. So the bottom line is this. Based on the previous lecture, we already know how to compute the vector f1, f2, f3, f4. And at the end, these are the 16 value of the vector f4 that we already computed. And because the value that we compute, 16 value we compute here, does not correspond to the original order that we're supposed to have, that's why we have to rearrange the value of all of this number into a different location. And that process, we call it unscrambling the fast Fourier transform. Now, the way to make it work is very simple. The idea is like this. Let us say, suppose we already compute F4 of 7. Well, instead of say F4 of 7, 7 is represented by 0, 1, 1, 1. So let's say we already know the computation of F4 of 0, 1, 1, 1. This number that you just computed is supposed to move to a different location. <coughs> and how do you determine the different location? The answer is very easy. All you have to do is just reverse the bit order. So for example, 0, 1, 1, 1, when you reverse it, it will become 1, 1, 1, 0, which is right here. You see that? So 0, 1, 1, 1, corresponding to location 7 of the vector f4. That location 0, 1, 1, 1, when you reverse it, it will become 1, 1, 1, 0. And 1, 1, 1, 0 corresponding to location 14. So that means the value that you get from f4 of 0, 1, 1, 1 has to move to this location, which is f4. 1, 1, 1, 0. Now, let's take a look at another example. If you look at another example, suppose, let's say, we already calculate F4 of 9. But the value 9 can be considered in binary form as 1, 0, 0, 1. So, after that, we have to move this guy to the different location. How? By reversing 1001. Well, when you reverse 1001, it will become 1001 again. So that means this one go to the same location. Nothing changed. So that is the idea. Okay. So in terms of the computer implementation, the way